Hi, my name is Armando Herrera. I'm a journeyman horseshoer. That's a certified journeyman horseshoer. I've been shoeing horses going on about seven years now. And then I recently got hired here at Adams Forge. I'm their uh, resident uh, employee who teaches daytime classes and also their shop foreman. Uh, I don't really have a favorite aspect. I pretty much like all of it. Anything where I'm being able to move metal, push it around, I just enjoy it. Um, if someone comes up to me with some type of a uh, project and it's really uh, really tough, it makes me think, I really enjoy it. You know? But if it's too simple, I kind of just pass on it. I mean, it's fun, but I want someone that's going to really make me work hard and think and kind of get me thinking outside the box. So I'm going to go ahead and start this. Now, commonly, a lot of people would use, this is a butane guy right here. It's fine. It's all right. The only thing you have to keep in mind is this is a bomb. This is a bomb in your hand. So when you go to light this thing, you're going to have propane evacuating out of here. You're going to light that and it's going to come out and this is going to be in your hand. So this could possibly blow up in your hand and really injure you. So a safer way to do this would be to light something here, like these matches here, and then go ahead and light your forge and turn it on nice and easy and slow. That's just a safer way to go ahead and light your forge. Um, a little bit about safety. Um, you want to wear cotton, 100% cotton. If you wear anything other but cotton, say like a little bit of some nylon or polyester, you have a big chance of that melting. And if that melts, it'll stick to your skin, then you have to pull it off. It's, uh, it's a little uncomfortable, but uh, you learn fast not to wear polyester cotton blends. You want 100% cotton for your shirts, your pants. Um, if you wear a long sleeve shirt, it's up to you. I like a short sleeve shirt because it gets hot in the shop. Um, a bib overall. Some guys wear full leather aprons. I don't like to wear them myself. It's too heavy. Anything that causes me to want to bend over a bit will tire my back out all day. So if I'm going to be working at this anvil all day long, which I'll catch myself bending over slightly, I don't need anything with more weight in front of me that's going to want to pull me down. Um, some leather aprons are heavier than others, so it just depends what you ask for and who makes it for you. That's just a preference, it's my choice. Another thing is, always wear leather shoes. They don't need to be steel toe, steel toe is up to you, but always leather shoes. Never open toe shoes, never synthetic shoes. Because when you're forging, if you can see on the ground now, you see all this scale down here, that stuff will fall off and it'll get right on your shoes. And if you're wearing a synthetic shoe, it'll stick on it and melt right through and burn on your foot. You always want to wear closed toe shoes, leather shoes, so it'll land on your foot. It'll just singe a little bit, but it won't burn in. Um, another important part is never wear gloves. Well, let me phrase that. Wear a glove if you're holding a hot piece of steel. But generally, you don't wear gloves when you're hot forging. If you're wearing a glove when you're hot forging, that scale that I just showed you will fall right into your glove hand and stick right to your palm. You can't get it off fast enough. So that's a very important thing to remember. Your hands are your tools and you need them every day. There's kind of like a rule a lot of people mention. When you stand next to your anvil, they want you to stand next to it, about right here, let your hands hang free, and they want your knuckles to be on top of the anvil right here. That's basically how everybody recommends you adjust the height of your anvil. Um, I differ with that in a little ways, because the way I look at it is right now, it's about an inch from my knuckle. If I go to hold my hammer in my hand and swing down, now my hammer head is touching the anvil Why my hand is at the same position I was prior. So now when I go to swing, I'm getting full height and full drop when I touch my metal. Then another thing you want to do is when you stand at your anvil, stand in front of it and then turn slightly to the side at a slight angle. So every time you're working, you're working on your face right here, or you're working at your horn right here. Then you want to be, I don't know, maybe about a foot and a half away. If you're too close on your anvil, you have to really bring your hammer right here, and you get no power. That way, if you're back a foot away, you can swing. And by the time your hammer has its heart, it'll come down, you get right there, just naturally, every time. If I was too close, naturally it's out here. I have to use more muscle to bring that in. 
and that's not good. You want to be as natural and as comfortable as you can. You know? And then another thing, you want to stay collected as much as you can, keeping your elbow in. It'll wing out sometimes, but just work on always bringing it in. Keep your feet together and your weight distribute you evenly. Try not to stand like this or like this, you know, even. In front of your anvil, slightly angled. Just basic things you should know. So it's a way to save energy. Way to save energy. It's all about saving energy and being efficient. Because sometimes you may be at this anywhere from an hour a day to eight hours a day. So it's about being efficient and taking your time. Take some classes, spend some time at the anvil on the forge, buy your own anvil, buy your own forge, practice at home, practice in class. So when you get a little comfortable, a little confident, go find some shops, take some pictures of some stuff you made, and show them. And ask them, hey, are you hiring? Um, I'll sweep the floor. If you need me to sweep the floor, I just want to be here.